But that's what they say because of the mistaken use of the word firmament. What about the waters above the heavens? Again, I've told you that some say that it's the clouds. E.J. Young doesn't think so, and E.J. Young is probably the best conservative reformed authority on early chapters of Genesis, the late professor at Westminster. He wrote, quote, I am unable to accept the opinion that the waters above the expanse refer to the clouds, for this position does not do justice to the language of the text which states that these waters are above the expanse. I agree with him. I'm trying to judge things by the text. I want to say it's the clouds that makes it easy. Makes the text right, makes it easy, but the text actually says that he separated water above the firmament. And even the smallest understanding of the firmament is this sky. If he would have said the water's in the firmament, it would work, but it's above. So I'm saying that I believe that there were water, waters in space when God created the world. I believe it from the text. I believe that there was water in space and that God separated the water in space from the earth by the atmosphere of the earth. Above the firmament was these waters that would have caused problems on the earth. God is now making, he's separating off the earth into the global planet that it is. He's removing this other stuff. The earth is becoming formed out of the other stuff, which again, the scientists say happened all by itself. You say, well, pastor, gosh, I know you're a little bit silly, but to believe the water is just out in space, I mean, I think you've lost it, Pastor, right? I mean, isn't that what most scientific people would say, probably, if they heard me say this? You know, it's interesting. If you read all the ancient creation myths, and I know I'm not helping my case, but they all picture, almost every one, great celestial oceans in space. I mean, isn't that interesting? You know what makes that interesting? Because they're all so different on all the other details. The one thing that they all seem to have are these primordial oceans in space that the world needs to be protected from because they're going to destroy the world. Why would they all say that? Let me prove that to you. A couple of uh, places. The Enuma Elish, which everybody likes to compare to Genesis, which is absolutely laughably absurd. In the fourth tablet, after the gods and goddesses have all been fighting and being jealous of each other, Marduk, who is the great Baal god, Bel, B-E-L, he kills Tiamat, who represents the chaos and ocean, who's one of the first gods, and he splits her in two like a dried fish. Half of her carcass he sets up as the heavens. Okay, He makes the universe out of Tiamat's corpse. Don't you, aren't you glad to know that's where you came from? And it says, he sealed her up as the sky and he pulled down the crossbar and he posted guards and he commanded them to not let her waters escape. There was water up there that Marduk put to keep from coming down. I mean, it's the Babylonian myth. You know, they don't know anything. And of course, you can read the same thing, however, in the Canaanite mythology, the celestial sea. Canaanites didn't get it from the Babylonians. We know that and they didn't get it from them. And then if you read a recent article entitled, quote, Cosmic Oceans, the Primordial Waters of Ancient Creation Myths, it says this, while creation myths exhibit great variation and often echo the prevailing psychology of their respective peoples, there is one critical motif that remains relatively common to a range of broadly dispersed ancient cultures from Mexico and Peru to Egypt and Sumeria, and that is the primeval waters. Why would they all talk about waters in the sky, in that space? Nobody sees that. Who came up with that? Hindu, Polynesian, Celtic, they all have the waters. The Miztec people of Mexico describe the first state of formless, shapeless, watery darkness. The Lakota tribe in North America, waters in, this, in space. Who, who's getting that? Who sees that? What if, what if all these testimonies have an actual grain of truth that at one time there was water that you could see? Why do we think the solar system is always the way it appears to us now? There are so many writings of ancient peoples that talk about the, what we know as Jupiter and Saturn, and it is the planets, and they call them different gods and goddesses in the different cultures. And yet, for some reason, Jupiter always supplants Saturn and eats some of his children somehow. Why does that always happen? Was there some heavenly reality that maybe they could see that there was kind of a clash that caused some cosmic disturbances, that pieces of Saturn did get sort of, it looked like, taken up by Jupiter or something. What if that actually happened? What if there was 
water in space at one time. And these ancient peoples represented it that way. Surely that's insane, Pastor. A 2011 article on space.com, quote, an icy moon around Saturn is showering rainwater onto its home planet, creating a vast halo of water vapor around the ringed world, a new study finds, huge geysers of water. The, the discovery means that Enceladus, Saturn's sixth largest moon, is the only moon in the solar system, system known to influence the chemical composition of its greater planet, researchers said. It also solves a 14-year mystery that had scientists puzzled over the source of the water in Saturn's ap upper atmosphere. They've, they've now found water all over the place in Saturn. The rings are all ice. It's all water. But there's liquid water all over the place because of the heat of the planet, even though it's so far away from the sun. The article goes on. There is no analogy to this behavior on the Earth said study leader Paul Hartog of the Max, Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research in Germany. No significant quantities of water enter our atmosphere from space. This is unique to Saturn. Was it always that way? They're puzzled over the source of, they were, had been puzzled over the so, source of all this water in Saturn's upper atmosphere. Another article, 2018 on astronomy.com, says, ask the question actually, if Earth formed close to the sun and Saturn far from it, why is their water so similar? All the water we see on Saturn is everything we can tell. It's the same kind of water on the Earth. And since we, you know, the scientists say that Saturn formed way out here and Earth here, well, where did the common water source come from? If Earth formed so close to the sun, Saturn so far away, why is their water so similar? According to the team, the similarities indicate that the same type of water may have been found in the inner and outer solar system during its formation. Which would require us to change our current models. Yeah, I guess it would. We're on day two in our text. They say at the beginning of the solar system. Now I know they believe it's a lot longer ago. But they think that there was water in space. The terrestrial-like DH of Saturn's rings and satellites may indicate a similar water source for the inner and outer solar system. A similar water source. There was water, and God made a firmament, an expanse that separated the water that they're saying was there. Here's another one for you. This one is my favorite. You can find this on zmescience.com. You can also find it on nasa.gov. Here's the title of the article. Just do a search on trillions, oceans, space. Don't do it now. <laughs> the title of the article, Enormous Water Reservoir Found in Space is Bigger Than 140 Trillion Earth Oceans. So if you take all the water in our oceans, times it by 140 trillion, that's the water that they see in space right now. Here's what they say about it. Astronomers have discovered the largest body of water so far known, a reservoir of water floating in space around a distant quasar holding 140 trillion times the mass of water in the Earth's oceans, end quote. God made an expanse, and he separated the waters that are out there, a lot of water. And if they're right that the universe expanded and was expanding and we're on day two, where's that water at? It's right there because it has to expand further. I think the scripture means what it says. I think that's exactly what God did. I want you to notice the third day, 